Greetings my fellow Monkey Brains, you're on the Electric Monkey Brain channel. Today we're going to take a look at the enigmatic and ubiquitous Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is a very easy uh, thing to generate high voltages. Here this Tesla coil is wrapped on an old water pipe, it's uh, approximately 300 turns of copper wire and the top is attached to an old uh, tin can but you don't need anything at the top at all. Uh, the bottom of the wire here is uh, ready to connect to the circuit and the input winding is just two turns of wire also ready to attach to the circuit. Here's my circuit board ready to go but before we attach this and see how it works and discuss it it's worthwhile to take a look at this circuit. So here's our circuit we're going to be using today. Here's the actual Tesla coil itself of approximately 300 turns the top of which is connected to the tin can or elevated capacitance. The bottom of the Tesla coil goes directly into the base of the transistor. The input windings are connected between the input voltage and the collector of the transistor. The way that this works is that a tiny bias current flows through this resistor and into the base of the transistor, turning it on. That pulls current through the primary winding, creates the magnetic field, and by induction, uh, pulls current in the Tesla coil in the opposite direction. And you can see that that will pull current out of the transistor, switching it off. <clears throat> Then the whole process repeats again and the circuit simply oscillates. Now, the beauty of this circuit is that because the base of the, the bottom of the Tesla coil is, direct, is connected directly to the base of the transistor, the transistor will always switch on and off directly at the resonant frequency of the Tesla coil. In other words, this circuit is, a, is an auto tuning circuit, so it will always run at the resonant frequency of the Tesla coil. Now these components down here uh, these Zener diodes are chosen to limit the voltage at the base here of the uh, transistor to protect the transistor. And the neon bulb, which switches on at a particular voltage in series with this resistor, are here chosen here to limit the voltage at the collector of the transistor in order to protect it. So if you were to make this circuit yourself, you need to choose the value of the neon bulb resistor and Zener diodes based on the limits of the transistor that you're using in order to protect it. And here we just have a, a capacitor to smooth the input voltage here. So let's put this together and see it in action. Okay, so here we are, we've connected up the circuit to our Tesla coil and we've connected the power supply. I've set the power supply to about 24 volts because I know how this system works, but if you're gonna do this self, this yourself, you should always start from, from a lower voltage for, for safety. I've turned the oscilloscope on here, but the probe is just dangling in the free air and it will act as an antenna and pick up the high voltage which comes from the Tesla coil. Never ever connect your oscilloscope probe to the high voltage uh, of the Tesla coil or any high voltage unless you want to blow up your expensive uh, oscilloscope. And now a word on safety, uh, here I have a ground lead, this ground lead connects to the earth on the power supply. Um, you have to be aware that when you're dealing with high voltage, if you don't use a ground wire, then you are the ground wire, right? And the, the high frequency, high voltage currents can pass, will want to pass through your body to the earth. So if you don't want to get shocked, then it's a good idea to, which is painful then it's a good idea to use a, a ground wire. Now to, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna draw some sparks from the uh, tin can and to do that I'm gonna use this screwdriver and I'm gonna attach the ground wire to the screwdriver like that so that the voltage and current goes directly into the ground. Now if you want to be paranoid like me, instead of holding this uh, rubber handle, you can even use a pair of pliers which have uh, rubber handles and then grip this and then that will give you even more insulation and protection. So I'm going to turn on the power supply now and you should see the signal on the oscilloscope. There it's running at about 500 kilohertz. So now I'm going to try and draw a spark from the top here. OK, 
Okay, so we get decent sparks for just the small amount of power here. It's less than, it's about 10 watts or something. But look at the uh, signal on the oscilloscope probe when I draw the sparks from here. What you can see is that because I'm connecting this, which is essentially a ground probe, to the top of the Tesla core, it's shorting the top of the Tesla core, so that will completely kill the oscillation. But because the sparks are the sparks are essentially turning on, on and off, very, very fast. And so all you see is the flickering on the, on the oscilloscope probe. So now I'm just going to zoom in to the uh, tin can so we can try to see those sparks more easily. So you can see those sparks are approximately one centimetre long. So we can estimate from that that the voltage is approximately one to three kilovolts or something like this. It's not possible to really measure the voltage because it's dangerous and it will destroy your measurement equipment. The spark is purple because of the nitrogen in the air. When the electrons recombine with the atom, nitrogen atoms and molecules in the air, they emit electromagnetic radiation which appears purple to the human eye. Okay, so I mentioned before that this Tesla coil is a, a resonator. Actually, it's a resonant transformer, meaning it performs the action of transformation, uh, but it does so in a resonant way. Actually, it has no uh, ferrite or iron inside here at all. It's simply an empty pipe. So you might ask yourself, how can a transformer operate if it has no iron inside it or ferrite inside it? And the answer is resonance. When I have two coils here, if the, uh, they will share energy at about 80% or 100% efficiency if they are in resonance. A resonator is basically anything which oscillates and stores energy. And in order for something to resonate, it has to have inductance to capacitance. The inductance of the resonator comes from mostly from this coil and the capacitance comes mostly from this tin can. The value of the inductance and capacitance will determine the resonant frequency of the Tesla coil. So what I'm going to do now is, is to turn it on and then I'm going to bring my hand close to the Tesla coil and we're going to look at the scope and you should see the value on the, uh, the uh, signal on the scope change. So now it's operating. So I'm going to bring my hand close and you can see that the amplitude, maybe you can also see the frequency of the oscillation is changing as I bring my hand uh, close and move it away. Now that is because my body is, when I bring my hand close, my body is acting as a path for the uh, waves, the current, to the earth. Now my body is not a very good conductor, right, compared to metal or copper. And so when I put my hand close, that is why the amplitude goes down just a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see, but when I put my hand close, my body becomes part of the resonant circuit. And because my body is a bad conductor, the amplitude goes down. Now the frequency also changes. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, I can tell you, I can just read it off here. It says 550, now it says 549 kilohertz. So if I bring my hand close, now it says 535 kilohertz, 533, 32 kilohertz. Okay. Now it's gone back to 550 kilohertz. Because I'm, when I bring my hand close, my body is acting as a capacitor. And when you add capacitance to the resonator, the resonant frequency goes down. Now, uh, to... To, to see why this is happening and to discuss this and understand this, we need to draw a diagram. So that's what I'm going to do next. 
Okay, so we tried to show before the effect of capacitance on the tesicle, and here I've drawn a diagram to show what's happening. Here's my tesicle, and here's the elevated capacitance. And I've drawn all of the electric field lines which would be emanating from something which is charged to a high voltage. And you can see the electric field lines spread out all over the room and end in surfaces, on surfaces like the table. But something important about Tesla coils is the interaction with the air. Because in the air there are molecules and atoms. And when we apply a very strong electric field to those atoms, they become polarized. Polarization means that we are literally pulling and pushing the negative and positively charged parts of the atoms or molecules together and apart. We're pulling them and pushing them apart. Now, the little atoms and molecules, they actually act like a capacitor where one plate is negatively charged and the other plate is positively charged. So the atoms and molecules in the air act like tiny capacitors storing electrical energy. Billions of them. Now, you can see here that if I was to remove this elevated capacitance and simply have a wire dangling here, that all of these electric field lines would simply disappear or change their shape, and most of the electric field lines would be emanating from the Tesla core. In effect, I will have changed or decreased the amount of volume of the air through which all of these electric field lines pass, decreasing it. And therefore, I would have decreased the capacitance contribution from the atoms and surfaces created by the electric field lines. That will decrease the capacitance of the resonator. And when we decrease the capacitance of our resonator, the resonant frequency will go up. On the other hand, if I was to take this uh, capacitance and make it huge, like putting a big metal sphere here, like you see some people do, then all of these electric field lines would spread out and spew even more all the way around the room and ending not only on the table surface, but on the wall and the ground and your body and your computer screen and your mobile phone. And in effect, the volume through which these electric fields pass will have increased and therefore they will interact with more air molecules and end up on more surfaces and therefore the effective capacitance which these electric field lines create would have increased and when we increase the capacitance of our resonator the resonant frequency will go down. So that is the effect of the ele elevated capacitance and how it affects the air. The air is a very, very, very important part of the Tesla coil and is most of the time overlooked. There's many, many more things I could talk about with the Tesla coil, but this video is too long, so I'll leave it till other videos. If you like this video and you like to help the channel, you can do so using the links below. That's it. Thanks a lot.